Hello, welcome to the simple home Pilates sequence with me, Caroline, at Movement Style. This sequence can be practiced as a standalone sequence or you can add it on to the warm up that is in the same playlist. Let's come down onto the mat and set up our neutral spine position. <clears throat> now, ideally, a little bit of support for the head and neck, perhaps a folded towel is useful. And we can roll down with our abdominal muscles already working and a little bit of support from the thighs if that helps. And as we get to the mat, we're going to lift the hips up and then just lengthen the waist out of the hips and replace the pelvis to the mat, balancing the weight out right side, left side. And let's lift the ribs up, lengthen the waist out of the hips and bringing the ribs back towards the mat, balancing the weight out right side, left side. We can support the head with the hands and just let the neck release and lengthen from between the shoulder blades into the crown and bringing the arms through to alongside the body. And let's align our legs whilst we're here. We can bring the inside legs together, insteps together, flex the feet at the ankles, and then just turn the toes out as we hold the heels together and we bring the heels in line with the toes. So our neutral spine position when we're lying on the mat is the same as the neutral spine position when we're in standing, but we just will feel it differently when we're lying down because obviously gravity has a different relationship to the body when we're lying on the mat. But let's think about the little imaginary spotlight on our tailbone shining straight through from the base of the tailbone to between our heels. And then the crests of the hip bones can be directed straight up towards the ceiling as if they're like little headlamps shining their way on our path. And then we've got space between the spine and the floor and at the back of the waist and that will vary from person to person. So I tend to be quite shallow in most of my body but my hips are quite thick by comparison. So that, that creates a big space, but it's just with the pelvis level, press of the hip bones, pubic bone level, the tailbone directed to the heels, there'll be some space between the spine and the back of the waist and the floor. Now the spine in the back of the ribcage as well, ideally in contact with the mat, and for many people, me included, just need a little bit of core strength around the base of the ribcage to settle that in position. And then the vertebrae of the neck lengthen and release from out of the vertebrae in the back of the ribcage, sides of the neck long and free, back of the neck as long and free as it can be. And the front of the chin is just gently tipped towards the top of the breastbone, one might say level to the ceiling if you have a flat ceiling, um, or level to the floor <laughs> if you have a flat floor, which not everyone has actually. Anyway, as we really depends if it's a very old house, often the floor isn't flat but never mind. So we're just once or twice, we're going to let the weight of the spine relax towards the mat, softening into the floor, and then breathing in, we're finding the neutral spine position here. And breathing out, we just relax our back muscles, let go of some habits and tension in the back, not pushing or pressing, just relaxing, and breathing in back into our neutral. So let's think about engaging our core strength from out of our breath. And if we think about a nice long exhalation, just following the stream of the breath from the tip of the nostrils, the breath leaving from the length of the nostrils, breath leaving from the back of the throat, the, the, and then the throat, and then the breath leaving from the upper chest, mid chest, depth of chest, nice long stream. And then as we breathe in, we just allow the breath to dive into the body, natural reaction to that extended exhalation. And with the exhalation, since we're just following the breath as it's leaving the nostrils, relaxing the nostrils from the inside behind the breath, relaxing the muscles in the pocket of space at the back of the mouth, behind the breath, relaxing the muscles within the throat and within the neck, the back of the neck, the sides of the neck from the inside as we follow the breath. And then as the breath leaves the upper chest, relaxing behind the collarbones into the shoulder joints. And as the breath leaves the mid chest, relaxing between the shoulder blades and the rib cage, And as the breath leaves the depth of the chest, feeling that the depth, the, the base of the chest, the floating ribs just gently taper and lengthen downwards away from the shoulders. And with this long exhalation and the inhalations just diving in as a, a sort of just a, a fairly quick reaction to the extended exhalation, we probably begin to feel that the ribs are tapering in towards the spine, that's part of our core strength, and that the muscles in the waist, as we breathe out in this long, strong, but quite relaxed way, are beginning to gather in towards the waist. And if you let your hands 
rest on the waist, the thumbs to the back of the waist, the index fingers to the front of the waist, you can probably just feel that reaction happening. And this is just where we can imagine a really wide belt wrapping around the waist, just using it as an, an idea to stand for the abdominal muscles, an imaginary belt, and we wrap it in so it hugs in and around, cinches in towards the spine and the back of the waist, gathering the abdominal muscles in little by little, little by little, little by little. Scale of one to 10, you're working as deep as you can, as strong as you can. You keep working as deeply as you can, but you let your strength relax back to seven. So you work right down the last layer of muscles you can influence before your internal organs, before your spine, but not necessarily at the maximum strength. Checking the legs are relaxed at the hip joints, gluteal muscles relaxed. And let's as well think about our imaginary smile in the lower abdomen, where we hollow down and back in the lower abdomen between the pubic bone crests of the hip bones, really hollowing close to the crests of the hip bones and we're still in neutral and the legs still relax. So now in this position with our cylinder of core strength working around the ribs and around the waist and in the lower abdomen, we're going to try and really feel the weight of the spine absorbed into the core and lengthen the spine, especially lengthening up over the front of the, the spine in the back of the waist. And then from here, we're going to aim to hold the spine in neutral just breathing out, rolling a foot, rolling the other foot, rolling a foot, and keeping the hip joints relaxed, keeping the gluteal muscles relaxed, lower abdomen still stays hollowed, and no change of pressure between the pelvis and the floor, or the waist and the floor, everything stable. And then allowing that movement to become bigger so that the leg floats right up and away from the floor as we breathe out, we can breathe in here, long exhalation like we were practicing, automatically engaging our core, but we deliberately deepen and strengthen that natural narrowing of the waist in the way. So again, we lengthen the spine, tailbone to crown, the waist really stretched, breathing out to knee float our other leg through, breathing in here, and as we're ready again, we keep the waist long, free the leg inside hip, inside knee heel, and let it flow back towards the floor. Now essentially, the movement is starting at the hip joint, and travels through the hip joint on the return. Just at the end of the movement, on the way down, we need to tuck the heel a little bit so the leg and the foot don't get too far away from us. But essentially, we're trying to carry the weight of the leg from the hip. Now, if you feel ready, we're going to breathe out to bring up our right leg first. We breathe in here, and we renew the core strength really powerfully, back of ribs, back of waist, and we bring the second leg through both knees above the hip joints, avoiding letting the legs come forward. We breathe in here, and again, we're going to have to really brace the core strength very deeply and firmly, and we let one leg flow back to the mat, and then the other leg. So we breathe in here, and then once again, off we go, lengthening the spine, tailbone to crown, but again, really feel the core strength, you know, taper through, and the movement flows towards the leg. So you've got this upwards, downwards dynamic going through the body all the time. We breathe in here and again breathe out, really engage the core strength really deeply around the spine as that second leg comes through, no doming, no tilting or tipping or changing. We breathe in here, and breathing out, we lower and we lower. And then let's leave that for the time being. We can just a little bit roll the legs inwards and outwards, side to side, in a little bit of a twist to release our lower back and release our hip joints, that's it. So I do one more like that, and then coming back to the center. So we're going to think a little bit more about our upper abdominal core strength and the core strength around our rib cage as we engage the core, our pelvic diamond, our belt fastened, the ribs tapering in, and we're going to let the legs lengthen away from us, which makes it much harder to be in neutral. So we just, again, get our pelvic diamond even deeper and stronger, our waist strength, especially behind us, very deep and strong, sides of the waist, and then the space between the base of the ribs and the pelvis quite strong, and that kite-shaped strength across the upper back, connecting the arms into the upper back. Now then, as long as it's comfortable, we'll let the arms slip back, and again, there'll be that tendency to ping up and out in the rib cage as the arms move back. So we need to draw the shoulder blades a little bit down the back, back to that upper back core strength we worked in the warm-up video and then the breastbone hugging to the spine and the ribs tapering in. 
And at this point, in theory, we're in neutral spine. And you keep the shoulder blade shrugging down the back, the connection between the back of the upper arm and the shoulder blade going. And with our exhalations, we get lots of strength into the back of the ribcage. And this movement is lifting the spine in the back of the ribcage. And the head and neck follow, and the chin just gently tucks towards the top of the breastbone. So the elbows stay wide, and the front of the chest is open, and the effort is mainly behind us here, behind us in the upper back here, between the floating ribs and in the back of the waist and coming down. So let's just give it a couple more goes. So lengthen through the whole spine and then flow the spine in the back of the rib cage up and the work coming from the core. Yeah. So we give it one last go there and then once again, rolling back down. So let's bend the knees once more. So we set up back to that position where we were, lengthen out through the whole spine, and once again, setting the core strength here. So although we don't need as much strength as we just had in the full body stretch in order to be in neutral, but just try to dive deep and strong like that all through the ribs and the waist and the lower abdomen in readiness for the movement that's coming. We're going to think about as we breathe out and we float single, and we're just going to stretch into the arms, reach towards the fingertips, feel the arms connecting with the upper back and exhalation for our abdo prep movement, breathing in to return. So again, working with muscles around the ribcage to come up, breathing in to return. Now, if it's not viable with the arms alongside the body, bring the hands into the back of the head again to support the head and neck. Avoid working with undue tension in the neck in this position. So then again, we've done the four abdo prep movements. And with control, with an exhalation, we just need to float that leg back down again. So let's breathe in here. And as we're ready, we breathe out and really engage our core. We can breathe in to connect the arms into the upper back. Breathe in, breathe out, shrug down, connect the arms into the upper back. With our next exhalation, the knee float as well. So lots of core strength around the back of the ribcage. Breathing in to return. Shoulder blades moving down the back, using the strength at the base of the breastbone and in the back of the waist. Lengthen the spine. Keep the waist really long in these movements. Support the head again if you need to. And then again, here we are, breathing out and breathing in to return. And then with the exhalation, we knee float that leg back down. So we've got one last variation to go, as long as you feel ready, if you feel strong enough. If you're not sure about working with the legs in the double knee float with the abdo prep movement, then just do the abdo prep with both feet still on the floor. Just take your time to build up the strength uh, for these sequences. Because although the movements look small, and although they look as though they shouldn't be much effort, if we're using the Pilates method, which is a really precise method, the work is very, very strong. And that's why Pilates is so highly regarded, because in fact, the work is intensely deep and it really helps to structure your body's strength from the inside outwards, which is the most effective because it really supports your bones. So we've had a little breather whilst I've been chatting about Pilates. And then we can think about our broad and wide slip and hollow, our smile, our imaginary two tight belt squeezing in, fastening in towards the spine in the back of the waist and the muscles wrap around the ribcage and the shoulder blades move down the back. We can breathe in, breathe out, connect the arms. With an exhalation, one knee float comes up. Breathing in here, back of the waist braces. As you're ready, out breath, your second leg comes through. Knees above the hip joints and feeling that cylinder of core strength supporting you. Your exhalation for the abdo prep when you're ready. And again, keep working with the muscles right around the ribcage lifting the upper spine rather than the head and neck forwards. You can support the head if that feels better. And a very last one to go here. Once again, we breathe in to come back down and let's just bring the legs in and towards us this time and circle the hips on the mat, releasing the lower back. So well done. Quite a challenging little combination of movements there. So here we are allowing the spine again to center. And let's bring the weight of the legs down so the soles of the feet are resting on the mat. We're going to think about Pilates bridge. And if you've got a Pilates ball, often just working with the ball between the knees can be quite helpful. 
Um, again, if you're holding the ball, grip the ball with the muscles of the inner thighs close to the knees rather than gripping from the groin in the depth of the hip joints because that will really inhibit your Pilates ability. But what you might find if you've got a Pilates ball or, or any little ball that would keep the knees in line with the hip joints as you're working in the bridge is that it helps you to really elongate your spine through the movements. Now check in with the support that you've got at the back of the head if it's necessarily right for you in the bridge. It may be, or it may be that it's not quite right. So I'm not sure actually with the support if it will be right or if it will be a little bit too much. I'll give it a go with, <laughs> if it's not right, I'll take it out so you can do the same. So heels are still in line with the sitting bones. We've got that broad and wide scoop and hollow, belt fastened, the ribs tapering in and the breastbone and the spine moving together. And again, through that cylinder of the core strength, you might be able to see me doing it, lengthening the spine, reaching into the crown, reaching into the tailbone. Now, I really think try to avoid any additional pressure going into your feet at the beginning of the Pilates shoulder bridge movement, avoiding any extra work coming into your legs. If you find a lift in the muscles just in directly in front of your tailbone, and then the smile works really broad and wide towards the crest of the hip bones. Very quickly, we bring the strength into the back of the waist, close to the sacrum, and rolling on through. Now with the bridge as well, what people often don't think about is the strength wrapping around the rib cage. So you really get that strength in again towards the back of the ribs, really using this as your spine stretches, very similar strength to the full body stretch exercise. Now a little bit your gluteal muscles need to work, especially in that low glute region and around the sitting bones. Um, so the gushy bits, the low glutes and close to the sitting bones. Heels might just a little bit press into the mat up here to help you support the weight of the hips. But as much as possible you're using your core strength, using the strength in the ribs to lengthen the ribs away from your shoulders to keep the weight away from the neck, back of your neck working and your inside legs lengthening away from the spine. So it's an inhalation up here, or two, and then as we're ready, we're going to breathe out, roll back down through the spine, segment by segment, and lengthening again into the crown of the head. So we breathe in here, just check the legs are relaxed, gluteal muscles relaxed, back of the neck is long, and then that broad and wide scoop and hollow, the lift in the muscles directly in front of the tailbone, the broad and wide scoop and hollow, the belt fastening from behind, the ribs working from behind, the connection between the shoulder blades and the back of the upper arm. Really lengthening the spine away from the shoulders, keeping the weight off the head and neck. Should have a tiny little bit of mobility there. And as we're ready on our exhalation, we roll back down. Now as you come close to the end of your exhalation and you're re-lengthening the whole spine, there's a moment where often the core strength dives really deep close to the end of the exhalation as you stretch your spine. Hold on to that strength as you breathe in. And then once again, deploy that strength in the lower abdomen and then around the waist and around the ribs, and lengthening the spine in the position back up again into the bridge. We breathe in in the bridge and then once again, we roll back down. So let's do one last bridge here. We breathe in, reset our neutral spine position. And again, avoiding beginning our bridge in the feet or the legs, but really beginning it at the tailbone in our broad and wide scoop and hollow, our belt fastening into the back of the waist and right around, ribs squeezing in around to the back as well, arms connecting into the shoulders. Tiny bit of gluteal strength if you need it. Breathe in, let the whole spine lengthen the sides of the ribs waist on into the thighs. Breathing out as you're ready, rolling right back down, reset our neutral spine position. So if we were using the Pilates ball, we can just take it out there, we can let the legs extend and just relaxing, rolling the legs inwards and outwards at the hips gently, wobbling the hips on the mat. We can roll the arms inwards and outwards and just gently wobble the ribs and the shoulders on the mat. So let's just bend the knees, we can hug the right leg in and towards the ceiling to keep the tailbone in contact with the mat. You can lengthen on up into a hamstring stretch, not necessarily a neutral. If you're aiming to keep the sitting bone, uh, the tailbone down, the sitting bones reaching away from the shoulders. Just a gentle stretch to release the lower back through the hamstrings. 
and then you can fold that leg in again. Give it a go on the other side, you hug the leg in, keeping the back of the neck long, shoulders broad, tailbone already rolling away from us and the sitting bone on the side. And then we can extend through the leg as far as it goes. We still keep the tailbone, sitting bones reaching away from us there. Space through the hip joint. And then there we are, breathing. And then let's fold that leg in and release in. So we'll roll ourselves over, come on to one side and pressing up. And then let's think about just sending the hips back and towards the heels. If you find it more helpful, you just pad up underneath the fronts of the ankles to support you there. Maybe useful if you find it hard to open the ankles. And from this position, if it's comfortable, we're going to draw the tailbone down, lifting up in the muscles just in front of the tailbone, and a smile, strength through the back of the waist. Kite straight, shape strength through the upper back, back of the neck, shoulders, ribcage, arms just slotting into the upper body. So if you did the warm up video, we were in this position quite a lot. And as we roll up, that's the position again, more or less, that we're looking for in the arms, but the arms are relaxed. So we can breathe in here and then breathing it to roll forwards and downwards, leading with the crown of the head, then leading with the spine in the ribcage, then leading with the spine in the waist lengthening the whole spine away from the tailbone, then the arms flow forward. So not leading with the arms in other words. We breathe in here and then as you're ready, you lift in the muscles just in front of the tailbone, you'll smile, leading with the spine again, shoulders are relaxed, arms are relaxed, strength builds into the back of your waist, belt fastens, sides in front as well, shoulder blades move down the back, we build in that wall of strength across the back of the neck, shoulders ribcage and the arms reconnect here. We breathe in, and then again as you're ready, rolling forwards. So people will tend to lead with the arms, but try to really lead with your spine, keep the arms passive, and they follow after this. We breathe in, breathe out, shoulder blades move down the back, the spine rolling, arms then stay passive, shoulder blades keep moving down the back. We build in that wall of upper back strength. But if the kneeling roll up, roll down is, is too much for you, instead, do the cat stretch here. So if you're in the kneeling, just another couple of rolls through the spine. But if you're not comfortable in the kneeling, then you can breathe out to roll into the cat stretch. Breathe in to lengthen out again towards your neutral spine position. Keep the waist in neutral, reach forwards and upwards through the upper back. And then breathing out to roll and to lengthen like that. So you can just do that instead of the kneeling practice. Good. So to finish, let's just draw ourselves around, come into a comfortable seated position. We can just stretch and lengthen our neck, walking into the left fingertips and that can lift up and over towards the right, drawing centre, walking into the right fingertips, that can lift up and over towards the left on your centre. Let's just reach forward, stretch the muscles between the shoulder blades, upper back can roll through, the small of the back stays tall and we return, stretching from behind, just avoiding that tendency to let the ribs pop out at the front and then releasing, rolling through the shoulders and well done. We've come to the end of this short and simple Pilates um, practice but all the same, it's an effective strengthener for the core muscles and is quite helpful for mobilising the spine, especially through the bridge and those little roll-ups and cat stretches we've been doing. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And thank you for any comments and um, remarks that you have to make about the video. Look forward to seeing you again soon on Movement Style.